Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on SNUI for another uh, very, very interesting uh, session with our guest, Tim Smith. And uh, this session is uh, something that excited me a lot because it's something regarding something that we don't know about the life of uh, our great pioneers, uh, pioneer emerged into Britain. And it's uh, regarding a period of her life uh, when uh, she explored another work, another job. So it will be very interesting. But first of all, welcome team on SNUI. Welcome with us. Good to be back. And uh, I would like just to give you very quickly some notes. This, uh, uh, this lesson is recorded and will be uploaded on YouTube SNUI film channel in the next uh, few days. Um, you will be asked by team to ask your question sometimes and uh, Please don't use the chat room, but raise your hand. If you are not used to do that, you will see that under the list of participants, there is a little blue hand. And clicking on that hand, I will see and I will invite you in the room. Another thing, I will ask you to keep your uh, uh, microphone on mute so we don't disturb each other. Okay, so everything is ready. We are ready and the team, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Okay, tonight is a bit of an experiment. Um, and I'll, I'll, so I'd like to set the scene a little bit before we start. The, the book I found called The Unseen Universe is one of those instances where the, the, it falls into your hand. It's a very spiritual thing. Books tend to fall off shelves or appear in your... And this one was given to me by a friend who got a box full of books and she didn't know what to do with them and she thought I might be interested. And a book called The Unseen Universe was in the box and that was really good. So I, and I thought, well, this is Emma Hardy's Britain. What's that about? So I started to read it. And of course, all of a sudden, it became very obvious that from what she was saying, it was very similar to what is happening now. So let's just set the scene. She, had, she fell out with the two worlds. She, worked, she was one of the founders of the two worlds, which is a spiritual publication, which is still alive today. And at one point, and again, she mentioned this in the book, she fell out with them because the other co-editors felt that her views were too Yankee. In other words, she had a global view of spiritualism, which at the time they didn't seem to want to adopt. So we're talking 44 years after the Fox sisters, after Hydesville. And at the time, Emma was six years away from passing to spirit, seven years away from passing to spirit. She was living in Manchester, she was a carer for a, a sick husband, and she was clearly unhappy. She was, it was like something, she'd been tied down. She couldn't gloat trot anymore. So, and, and then she'd been let down by these other editors. And the thing about reading this book, and the wonderful thing about reading this book, is you, if you're a spiritualist, Emma Hardy Britain is one of the premier pioneers. She supplied the seven principles which we all adopt and live our lives by. So it was interesting to actually find something where it was her words. You were actually listening to her speak. So the book, I don't know where, whether, whether any of you will ever see it again, but it's, it's really the, the publication called The Unseen Universe, which she managed to publish from 1892 to 1893, so just 12 months. And in that, there are, there are lots of articles about spiritualism around the world, from America to Greece and Turkey, which, which is 
absolutely fascinating with lots of names of mediums that I'd never heard of were doing amazing things at the time. So it's a really interesting book. But one of the things was it was a publication. So it had a question and answer section where people, you know, readers could write their questions, send them to the editor and she would answer them. So the answers you get are Emma Harding's Britain in her own words. And I thought that was really, really interesting because it literally you are you are getting to listen to her. For the first time, she's a real person in her own words, giving you some answers. The other thing I found was that the questions were remarkably like the questions you hear now in churches and at the college. They just, they're the same question. So I thought it was interesting that we should actually visit these and then maybe I, as, you, as we answer it, as she answers these questions, I've left a little page where we can actually comment on it. So if you have any comments, as, as Danny has said, raise a blue hand. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to open a PowerPoint. And as I said, it's a bit of an experiment because I, I'm going to have to read you the question and then I'm going to have to read you the answer. And then we can then we can have a chat about it. But see what you think. I think these questions are exactly what we normally normally do. So I'm going to share the screen. So hang on a sec. <coughs> and here we are. I remember 44 years after Hydesville and the Fox sisters, six years before she passes to spirit. And all these are in her publications. So the first one is going to work. There we go. Now, dear madam, this is lovely Victorian language, dear madam, being so placed as to be unable to attend spiritual lectures or meetings and remembering the magnificent prompt you answers you gave to questions from the audience on the only occasion I heard you lecture at Nottingham, I venture to ask, can you and will you answer me? What is the difference, if any, between spirit, soul and mind? <coughs> now, I'm sure you've all heard that question. It's been asked. So here's the answer, at least here's the answer in 1892. There are in the universe three elements only. This is, this is Emma speaking. Matter, force or life and spirit. Man is the trinity of these elements whilst on earth, being incarnated in a, in a material body, vitalized throughout that body by force or the life principle and guided directed and inspired by spirit, which is intelligence, the real man. Soul is the union of spirit and life, the latter being the spiritual body and this dual man, the soul. This departs in the action of death, leaving the material body to disintegrate and be taken up again in new forms of matter. Mind is the character of the man, the measure of what he knows and thinks, and is simply the result of the mental, moral, and intellectual force, the sum and shape of which is mine. And there you go, that's her answer. So, what do you think about that? Spirit, soul, mind, body. Has anybody got a comment about that? No? Well, I think, in truth, if you want my opinion, what it's worth, that is a really clear description and a really good answer if anybody asks you what's the difference between spirit and soul because we all understand what mind and body is but there's always this confusion about spirit and soul so i think that's a really good answer any any comments anybody have a, an alternate view no all quiet <laughs> okay we'll go on to the next one then May get a little more of a response. Will Mrs. Britton give to an invalid who cannot attend her lectures for reasons, her reasons for rejecting the doctrine of reincarnation and its relation to spirit, spiritualism? Now, if I, I've been to so many trans sessions where someone sticks, sticks their hand up in the audience today, do you believe in spirit in, in reincarnation? 
So here's, here's the answer from EVH. I reject the doctrine of reincarnation first and last because it is totally unproved. Much as I loathe the thought or bear the bare possibility of living again as a mortal on this cold, hard, sorrowful world, I would willingly bend my mind to speak to the acceptance of the idea if it were capable of proof or demonstration. I have myself given hundreds of communications when practicing as a test medium to the above effect and received through other media thousands of similar denials of the reincarnation doctrine. Besides the fact, facts above stated, the strongest combined testimony in existence, the doctrine of a return to earth for the sake of progress is unnecessary. Every returning spirit speaking of an affirming progress to be eternal in spirit life. Next, the doctrine is contrary to all the known laws of nature which never return upon its footsteps. All its circles are spiral, all its cycles upwards and onwards, never backwards or downward. The oak never returns to the acorn, the eagle never returns to the egg. A very definite view there. Spirit grows through and in matter as a mold that it takes on intelligence and animation after passing through countless embryonic states, that it lives in material form until these perish and disintegrate, when the spiritual part is taken up in the realms of spiritual existence as elementary spirit. So how about that? That's fairly interesting, isn't it? And it is a question that's asked all the time. Now, I don't know what your views on that. I'll give you mine. Uh, I've heard the acorn analogy given many times. And I would say, you know, the acorn never goes, the, the oak tree never goes back to the acorn. Well, is that true? Every year, the oak tree produces acorn. It manifests acorn. Every year, it goes into a dormant state, grows a new tree ring, and goes on living until it reaches maturity. And of course, which came first, chicken or egg? Well, chickens always lay eggs and eagles lay eggs. So they do change energy. So the basic law of science, which is energy can be changed, but it can't be created or destroyed. That's the basic science principle. So as far as that's concerned, I think that's a spurious argument to use. Hmm. There are three. Why yes. That's okay. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's go then. Uh, Henrietta, you have a question or a comment? I have a comment on reincarnation. Yes, please. Because I saw the series on um, life after death, mm -hmm. starring also uh, medium Nicole Daas. And there was also an episode on reincarnation. Okay. And they showed some people that as children remembered other parents really vividly. Yes, I can hear you. That's, they that's could fine. tell where they lived. They, they could tell what they did with them. And this was verified because relatives were still alive. So I think reincarnation is a possibility. I, I would agree with you. I've read some of the similar books, and the, the, the most famous one is the, the child who believed he was a pilot. Yes. But interestingly, though they went through all that evidence with, with them, when the child got to an age and they, there was closure because they left a reef where the pilot had died, they found the crashed plane underwater, they knew where it was, it, it ended. He was no longer aware of that personality. So, you know, sometimes you might say, well, maybe that was possession rather than remembering a past life. I should, I should own up. I'm a hypnotherapist and I specialize in regression. 
in mm. past lives. So I do have a view, <laughs> which is not necessarily Everest. Um, but it, it, you have to be open-minded about these things. Um, there are many ways that past life could be um, being used. And a lot of these regression techniques could be picking up a, a, a life from a, a general soul. You know, the, the, if you imagine a, a diamond with all its facets and, and spirit want to help people, so they pick a, pick a life. That's a real life, but not necessarily the life of the person who's there, who's actually being regressed. So we have to be open-minded about it. If, if you want my honest opinion, I've done enough regressions now to, to believe that it is past life. And another really interesting man, the man who invented or oh, coined the word near-death experience, um, Raymond Moody, spent 40 years studying this very subject. And at the end of his, his career, 40 years into it, he'd never, he'd never admitted that he believed or didn't believe. After 40 years, with enough evidence, he actually stood up and said, I believe there is an afterlife. So quite important. So as long as everybody's open-minded about it. And even the, even the SNU, thankfully, we're open-minded about it. We, we are an open religion. We are, we are open to people's opinions. It's personal, you know, personal responsibility. And if you look in one of their publications, I think you see the religion and spiritualism. At the end, there's a chapter. And the chapter talks about the possibility of an upward spiral of progression. My view is, you know, we, I can't believe we learn enough in one life. But I don't believe that we come immediately back into someone else's. So it's not, not a, a, it's not like chain life, not like chain smoking. I believe we do come back, but at, but at different intervals, depending on what's necessary. So that's, that's my view. Sammy, you've got your hand up. Hi, yes, Tim. Um, I, I think for me personally, her views are of her time um, and what evidence and was available at that time. Whereas now, as science and even film, TV have progressed, we have more um, opportunity to hear these stories and learn about what's happening and study it as well. So I think her views are uh, right for her time, but things have progressed and moved on and people have learned and understood more since then. I, I don't disagree with that, but, uh, but I remind you, she was probably one of the most experienced and well-traveled mediums of the, of the age. Yeah. And when she said she'd done thousands of, of these sort of, she really had. So I don't dismiss what she says, because in truth, in real truth, she's right. Nothing is proved. Today, nothing is proved. Is it? <laughs> no, I, I think we just have more opportunity now to hear, um, like with the program um, on surviving death, you you see you see more of these when you see the children um that are providing the evidence of parents and pointing them out in photographs and that and they've been studied for for years as well by scientists um i, I think there is something there to say you can see that there is the potential for um reincarnation yeah i'd agree there is something there but we can't prove what, which yeah. is, which is, you might as well say that's true of all spiritualism. Every time yeah. a medium stands up and gives a message, we can't prove it. Exactly. <laughs> Sharon, do you want to? Oh, yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, yeah, most of what you say, I, I totally agree. I, I mean, I always begin the, uh, by asking the question, uh, how old am I as a spiritual entity? You know, how old is the soul? And when you, you ask that question in relation to eternity and realizing that you're living eternity now, not something that you inherit when you, you know, make the transition to the world of spirit, then it opens up the question on reincarnation. What am I doing within that eternity? 
Yeah. You know, I'm not sitting on cloud nine uh, streaming a heart when I cross over. So the soul must be doing something. So I, I always work on the premise that it, of that um, the soul or the spirit, the, the soul, I call it, cannot possibly hope to achieve all it can in one lifetime. We cannot take on the different lives or the different perspectives of different uh, of the one life. Your life is different from mine's and, every, you know, my next door neighbor, his life is different. He sees things from a different perspective. So the soul for me needs to be a rounded entity to take on board as many experiences as it can in order to evolve. I, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, we're on a journey from creation to creator, um, mm. an eternal journey. Um, so what are we doing? We're progressing. We're learning. We're progressing. We're learning. We're and that's, right. that's absolutely right. And we don't know how that learning takes place. Maybe it's all that there are people who believe it's all in spirit. Mm. Um, if you look at what Emma said, she is suggesting there that we start out in the physical world as, as something, maybe a rock, you know, mm. or a crystal. And we progress through plant life and basic animal life until we reach a point where we the pinnacle of physical life is humanity, is, is a human being. And that intelligence and that awareness is what she's suggesting in, what, in her answer. And again, that was current at the time. That was current thinking at the time. Um, it was an evolutionary thing. Um, so there is a lot of interest there. And as you can see, you've just gen proved my point. They were asking questions about reincarnation, uh, you know, 121 years ago. And... Uh, they still are. People still are because it is. It's a fascinating subject. Um, as a regressionist, I, I certainly find it very, very interesting. And if you do uh, what's called a spiritual regression, which is a life between life, that becomes very interesting because you're actually talking and meeting with your spirit self. So you're finding out who you really are. So. <laughs> Just one other point. Yeah. Uh, we we are sort of sometimes our views are fixed. What we don't realize is that the spirit world is evolving at a greater pe pace than we are. Absolutely. We're sort of we're, 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 you know we're in a you know it's like a, an echo, isn't it? So they're that far into the echo, and we're just because we have regressed back into physical matter, we're far behind it. So our views are limited. Whereas if we when we return back home, then we suddenly realize how how primitive we've been while we've been here. Yeah, the, the theory is that it's filtering down. You know, yeah. most of the innovations we develop and and you mm. are, are filtered down from, from the, the next frequency, the next level. Is that um, ping-ponging backwards and forwards? Well, I don't know about ping-pong, but certainly it's dribbling <laughs> through. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, <laughs> was there, Julia was, was there, wasn't there? Did, did you still have any hand up? Yes. Uh, yes, I, I was going to say exactly what that lady said, so she's preempted me. <laughs> right, Dan. And Maria, <laughs> Maria have, you, have you got a, something to say on that subject? Maria? Mm -hmm. Need to unmute, Maria. Uh, got it. Good. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Lovely. Um, I, I have thoughts on maybe um, the soul could be tapping in to the consciousness. Um, I have a grandson who at the age of four um, was very explicit that he was a man at some point in his life. Um, he explained everything and he said that... Um, he didn't speak this language. He spoke another language. Um, and I have had thoughts about it, like I said, since. And I just wonder if maybe there's a tapping into the consciousness rather yeah. than them actually having another life. That's yeah, all. absolutely. It's, it's roughly what I was talking about. If there's a universal consciousness and you tap into that by the tuning to it, you pull down a life. 
you know, mm-hmm. that's the life of someone else's. But when you think about that, if you're a regressionist, um, you're always helping people. Strangely enough, the life, it's not, it's usually a very ordinary life. It, you know, it's a, it's a misnomer to think it's always a famous person. Uh, that's likely to be the consciousness of the person, not not true mm-hmm. regression. But mostly they're very ordinary lives, but they help in some way unblock whatever's blocking this current life. That's my experience. I'm sure other people have other experiences. Right, okay. But yes, it could be. That's one of the, that's the nice thing about this subject is there are lots and lots of different opinions, mm-hmm. and none of them are wrong. And we can all wait until we do pass the spirit and then we might get an answer. And I stress we might get an answer because they may not know either. <laughs> however, exactly, yes, yeah. Exactly. However, I, I don't know whether you've sat in any of, of Judith Seaman's trans demonstration but, and talked to Judith. Judith. Judith doesn't believe in reincarnation, but the guide that comes through does mm-hmm. because... They ask that question and he answers it. And he, he gives that the answer that, yes, of course there is. <laughs> that's, um, yeah, that's, that's right. Even in, in, this, in uh, the spiritual realms, they all have their own opinion. But that's, um, as they do say, that, in my opinion, that's my belief. Yeah. Well, I, I watched the, the president, audience with the president um, on this topic a couple of weeks back. And I found Charles Coulston's opinion, who is an expert on this and he collects messages from guides and he said that out of the 140 odd um, messages he, he collected over a hundred of them when asked about reincarnation said yes it exists yeah yeah so that's pretty interesting you know that's, that's that's a fact it's 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 anecdotal but it's a, it's in, in a way a, a, at least someone's bothered to done some quality of research on that. So it, it's a fascinating subject. In fact, oh, I, think, I think I'm doing a talk on it in, I can't remember when. So keep keep an eye out, but there's one coming up in a couple of months. Right. Okay. If there's no one else, shall we move on to the next? We have a oh. Fiona and I don't know if uh, there was also Julie. So anybody else want to? So take your hand down, Fiona. I can see you waving. Yeah. Yep. I, I'm actually. I believed in reincarnation, and now I'm on the fence because, well, the, the reason I believed it because, like another lady said, as a woman, how can I know I live a life as a man? And, you know, all the implications of the different sex, the different cultures. You know, I'm, I'm a Western woman. How would I know what it's like to live a life in servitude? But then I was talking to somebody and they said, you know, we, I said, well, what about these children? I saw the program about that little boy, fascinated me. And they said, yes, but do you remember when spirit comes really really close you can hear their thoughts you you know their life you can feel them so if a child that happens to a child as far as that child's concerned they are that person and that made me start to think ah you've got a point here so I'm basically on the fence. I don't disbelieve it, and I don't fully believe in re- reincarnation. Well, I, I think being on the fence is, is the only option because we can't prove anything, absolutely anything, until we pass the spirit. But there you go. That's that's why we we're intelligent. We like challenges, and we like at least talking about it. Helena, hello, uh, Helena. Hi, Tim, and hi, uh, Daniela. I am. Um, I've had many. I've had re- uh, regression sessions um, when I was at SAGB, um, but I have to say that the majority of things that I witnessed, it was always as a bystander. It was never me present in the person's life. It was always me watching, seeing how someone had passed. And I have to say the information that I witnessed came fruitful um, in my understanding in spiritual history that was kind of revealed to me that I was showing glimpses, I'll say, of things that happened in the past. 
that later confirmed, um, as I say, the meeting of people I've crossed paths with. So I have to say, I do agree with the consciousness that if we do tap in, as you say, uh, as a regression, that you can tap into different lives of others, that they do guide you and help you to a better understanding. And yeah. I guess you could say that in some sense is a collectiveness, but um, I don't know if I would consider it a reincarnation. I mean, if we're all energy, we're basically reincarnated anyway. It just changes. Well, there's lots of things. You know, that they, we now know that, that our DNA, for instance, carries the DNA of our predecessors, our ancestors, I agree back, on that. back seven generations. Now, if you work out how many ancestors that is, that's quite a lot of lives. The but universe? You, well, it's not quite the universe, but it's, it's several hundred that you can tap into. So yeah. that's a possibility as well. It could, it could be an ancestor. And we've always had ancestor worship. And in a way, um, what we do as mediums is ancestor worship. Anyway. Um, Thank you. One of the things is, I, I don't know whether, if you have been regressed, and, and I have, is how intense it is. It was, it was just a general exercise that they were doing was they take you back to an early period in your life. They were at, you were asked to see what was in the room. It's like taking your mind back in stages. Right. Um, I was taken back to when I was six months and, you know, how the place looked. But I had seen the place before I, what had happened in the property before I was born there, which was really bizarre because it was, the house was burnt down and that is what I saw. But yes, I wasn't present in that moment at six months, but I could see what had happened to the property. So it was like a psychic impression. Yeah. Then obviously I was taken to um, the 18th century. I wasn't allowed to go in. I was blocked by somebody who I recognized, said you can go in, not to know, uh, for good reason. And then obviously I was brought to um, the 19th century where I witnessed a child getting knocked over by a lorry and I was standing beside a man reading a paper on Jack the Ripper, and it was January the 11th. So it was interesting in the sense that some of the stuff I've, you know, just saying, it was always a bystander. It was never... Yeah, that is interesting, because n normally you become the person. And that's why I said I, it's intense, because all your senses are involved in that. You yeah, know, it was just always could, a bystander. Right? That is unusual, really. Um, but uh, I'm just worried. <laughs> no, <laughs> aren't we all? But, but but I it, say it has helped. It has helped it, understand it a lot help. of things. Well, that's the important thing, and and that's why we do it. We're here to help and and be of service. Uh, but it Thank is you. intense. If you if you have a, a, ever had a regression, you you have the senses. You can smell things. You can taste it. You you use all your senses, and it is it is very real at the time. Anyway, let's Thank move you. on. Let's move on because that that is an interesting subject. And it proves the point, you know, 121 years later, we're still talking about it. So, pray, madam, may I inquire why Mrs. Lean, ne Florence Marriott, writes so constantly of dark circles as the method by which the best, apparently so, spirit manifestations are to be obtained, whilst you, with seemingly equal persistence in all your writings, denounce them. Who shall decide when doctors disagree? Isn't that wonderful Victorian language? And here's the answer. In my 30 years of spiritual mediumistic practice and observation of phenomena, especially in America, emphatically declare that the best spirit phenomena I have experienced through my own mediumship or that of many of the most powerful physical trans and writing mediums have been given in the light and some of the worst cases of fraud, folly and deception it has been my lot to encounter have resulted from sitting in dark circles, where the opportunity for such practices were all too favourable. I simply reiterate the fact that many hundreds of the best and most powerful mediums of the new dispensation have given tens of thousands of wonderful manifestations in the light. Consequently, Dark is not an essential factor in the production of such powers, whilst it must be acknowledged to be a fruitful promoter of fraud and wrong. What do you think? 
<laughs> Look how controversial that was. And, and remember, it's 121 years ago. More. 124 years ago. This is this is these these topics are as, as current right now. We haven't we haven't moved on in a way. So Julie, you, you've got a comment there. Well, perhaps they weren't aware in that. I mean, my understanding of dark circles would be negative energy. It wouldn't necessarily be, a, you know, I don't know, things from the dark side or a demon or, or something like that. But, I mean, back in those days, I mean, did she ever in the book mention negative energy or was it, was it not a topic in those days? Did they not know about it? I don't recall that being a topic that they asked about, no. Mm. But I, I, I think yeah. what's interesting is that, that the dark circle in, in the 19th century and 20th century seemed to be de rigueur. It seemed to be necessary to bring forward ectoplasm. Mm. Now, in the 21st century, it's not necessary. Spirit have moved on and we are trying to move on. Certainly the daylight seances that have been held um, before the AFC was closed down by COVID, were very powerful. Um, certainly in a healing context, they, they had very, very good results. So I think, I think we've, we've moved on, and I think spirit have, have moved on. They no longer think that, that ectoplasm is necessary, um, and, and they realise the dangers that it brought with it. Yeah, it's, it's dangerous. Mm. Yeah, and... and it's unnecessary. They've got they what they're doing now in using daylight is they're using the energy of the sun, they're using energy, the frequencies of daylight to to power uh, these seances. So you know it, it's worth thinking about that we we have moved on, and and quite frankly, what uh, she was talking about there was fraud, and it's it's quite recent. Just just a few years back, there was a really interesting case, wasn't there, where. Um, a trans medium in the dark purported to be to be able to manifest spirit, but unfortunately for him, he didn't realise that the the um, room had infrared cameras. So though it was dark, um, there was there was a lovely video of him walking around the room and blowing in people's ears. I know it's awful, isn't it? And is, is that why back in the day that they, when you sit in the box, you know, which I've done myself, gonna, yeah. and they had that in infrared light on your on your face but i think all that does is it distorts your vision yeah that's right your, your eyes will, are trying to focus mm. in, in the red light that infrared light you, you can't focus and so you're bound to see distortions you're bound to see changes in facial expression yeah that's true but yeah. it's not necessary I, i've sat i've sat and seen uh, features change in daylight yeah me too yeah so you know, we, we've got to take this on board. We've got to move on, I think. Um, mm. It's a bit staged sometimes, isn't it? Sometimes. Well, I think we is. need to... It is, but we are, we are changing. We are moving on. We've, you know, things are, are getting are different. It's different from her time to now. Mm. Um, oh, definitely, yeah. As someone said earlier, the, the science has moved on as well. So we have a greater understanding of how it's possible to do all those things. We can't prove it yet, but we're getting there. Well, I don't know because the the University of Northampton now have um the past year have had a um, what do you call it a studio a workshop yeah, that, yeah. yeah I've said, I've taken part in some of their their experiments with healers and and it is interesting you know they there is they, they've used machines where it shows the brain pack where brainwave patterns and yeah. clearly when you're attuning when the healer attunes. It does affect the patient. You can tell by the brainwave, the, the, the printouts they've got, that there is a change in the, you know, the, the frequencies of the patient when the healer attunes and connects. So we are getting there. Slowly but surely, we're starting to get the evidence. This country, is very recognized, yeah. this country is very backwards. Brazil, uh, Brazil, India and China, are, uh, 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 Japan are much more advanced in this sort of study but we'll get there um henrietta well in her days wasn't it the case that um if mediums were to produce ectoplasm 
and lightnings yeah. come into the room, they will get either seriously wounded or killed even, in some cases. Yes, I mean, the, 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 um, there are many examples of that, that, that when the ectoplasm is drawn back by a sudden shock in, in that sort of circumstance, it takes with it other things from the physical world, which aren't going to and help people in their bodies, you know. So yes, it, it does appear to be dangerous to 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 bring to break into um, a medium achievement in a, in that sort of state when they're producing ectoplasm. However, I, you know, I like you many of you. I'm sure you've seen some of the pictures, um, and there's a, there's. A, Jack Webber was very famous for what he could produce in the dark, and he he was photographed uh, by by Harry Edwards. And when you look at the pictures, you think, "Gosh, that's that's got to be fake," because we're living in a world of Photoshop. And I can I, I, I use Photoshop. I can fake most of the things, including including orbs and all that sort of stuff. But when you actually look at the text and what he was using for equipment. And the exposures, then you start to realise how how incredible these pictures are. Very hard to fake on, on film in that sort of camera at that sort of exposure. So you have to be open-minded about these things. Technology has moved on as well, you know. And nowadays, you know, we we are starting to use digital technology. There are texts coming on phones from Spirit. There are orbs, which, you know, most of the time is dust or a light reflection, but sometimes you can't, can't pin it down that way. You can actually see images in them. So open-mindedness is important and use of new technology is important. You know, photography, computers, it's, it's becoming more interesting and spirit use it, spirit want to use it. But like everything else, <laughs> like everything else, you have to do quite a lot of it. You have to practice. You, know, you have to give them the opportunity to experiment. Because that's what we're doing and that's what they're doing. Okay. Um, Neil. Neil or Nilios? Yeah, have a blue hand up. You have to... Neil Laka. You have to, you'll have to unmute, Neil. Hi, yeah, it's, 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 um, it's Neil or Neilios, whichever is your preference. I'm easy either way. Um, mm -hmm. That was a, that was a joke, by the way. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah. yeah, I just, I think the conversation's moved on, the discussion's moved on. I'm just going to say, um, in terms of physical mediumship, I think, um, I think is it, it, you can look at physical mediumship, in my view, as a spectrum of ability. Um, and I think it's, it's genetic and uh, like a, a pure physical medium who is able to exude ectoplasm and, and you know, and, and build up to a, a full materialization is in, incredibly rare. Um, and I do believe that um, a physical medium who is able to do that in terms of their development do need to develop in, in blackout, in total blackout um, as a means of protection. And over a period of time, then can work towards working in light. But it's a slow, slow process. Probably what you've experienced in terms of modern experiments, you're not working with, uh, um, or we're not working um, in terms of being a physical medium. We work in a slightly different way as a healer, perhaps doing psychic surgery rather than sitting or your intent is a sit to to create a fully materialized spirit. So I, I do believe there's a spectrum, really. Um, I just wanted to, like, I thought I'd just bring that up as a point um, to add to the discussion. I've actually sat with a physical medium, and I and I always remember um, a pure physical medium, the, the real rare kind, and I always can remember, it was on one occasion, this person was exposed to red light, probably a couple of seconds more than spirit wanted her to be exposed, and I actually saw, like, a sunburn on her skin, like a, 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 a reaction after after the seance. Yeah. So where her skin was red and like she'd been exposed to the sun. So it's, it, I, you know, I, it's incredibly dangerous, I think, you know, to, to, to physical mediums. You know, um, that's why blackout is, is definitely necessary. Yeah. Well, I, I, can't, I can't comment on that. I, I've sat in daylight answers and they are very, very powerful. Very powerful. 
Um, I just wonder if it's intent, if it could be coming down to intent and the purpose. You know, if you're sitting in, 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 in um, light lit conditions um, for the purpose of perhaps healing, um, um, yeah, I can understand how that would work, but I don't, I don't believe that you're going to get you know, unless it's as a real developed physical medium and maybe he's doing it for like 30 years and gradually they've introduced more light over that period of time, that, that is possible. But I don't believe otherwise, yeah, I, I do think that it's dangerous otherwise. And I, do, I take on board your points about, um, about physical, fraud and physical mediums as well and, and the gentleman who's caught in the dark. And I, I 100% agree with you, you know, that that is obviously the downside of sitting in the dark too. I think it is interesting, though, a lot of, I've seen again at the college table tipping. We all know what table tipping is. Um, and, I've, and that's been caught on security cameras in daylight. So mm -hmm. there, is, there, are, there are forms of 21st I, I, physical medium check. Yeah, I can, I, can, I can do myself personally. I, I do on occasions practice table tipping. And I can, in, in lit conditions, the table will go on its own. Which yeah. is very light touch. So yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I just wonder it's about energy. Maybe that's just wondering if that's a different kind of energy is being used. Again, I, I can't. I can't say. Yeah. We, all yeah. we can do is experiment. Absolutely. But, but what what I found interesting is that discussion was going on in 1892, as well. <laughs> yeah. So that that's that's why I'm doing this. That's why the experiment is so interesting. Okay, let's let's move. Is there anybody else who? No, good. Okay, let's move on to the next one now. Dear Madam, do you think there are none other than human spirits in the world? I believe there are, but would like your opinion. So, do you think there are, there are none other than human spirit? Okay. I was taught that as a spiritualist, I ha I have since had additional reasons to believe, namely, that spirit is the alpha and omega of existence and saturates atoms of matter from the rods to the human being. I was taught and still believe that spirit grows through and in matter as a mode, that it takes on intelligence and animation after passing through countless embryonic states, that it lives in material form until these perish and disintegrate when the spiritual part is taken up in the realms of spiritual existence as an elementary spirit. What about that? So basically what she's saying is that we progress. We progress through a whole series of physical manifestations until we reach human intelligence, human awareness. And from that point on, we take on spirit form. Now it's interesting that, that Wallace, who was a contemporary of Darwin, believed that as humans we evolve and because we create by thought and intention, we actually created the spirit form. So we didn't want to die, so we created the spirit form to carry on living. That was it, which is you know evolution in action, which I thought was quite interesting. But what she's saying there is literally we, we progress. You know, we, we, we start in the physical at a very low level and progress through all the levels until we manifest as human and then move on to, to a spirit elemental form and go through the whole process again at the next level. Yes, Fiona. I do think that there are, well, I, I do agree with her. Um, having worked with many animals, you know, the horses, dogs, cats and things. But I also think there's um, separate ones like elementals, um, the elemental spirits of the earth. But I, do, uh, I personally feel that the earth has her own soul. That's, that's just my opinion when, um, because we are of the earth. I think everything as we know as spiritualists, is connected. Yeah. Um, well, if you, if you watch the on YouTube, there's an SNUI uh, talk by me about that. Yeah, no, I watched it. <laughs> and, and I, I'm of the same opinion. We're all affected in this life by magnetism, by electromagnetics. Everything is affected by it, and everything reacts to it, be it crystals or rocks or what, whatever. 
and it, it is fascinating to to actually discover and this is thanks to science that for instance megalithic megalithic circles are not only positioned in in special places of power but also the stones that they use at certain times of year of the year are energized their magnetic fields are energized now how 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 was that possible how could they possibly know about that and we're only just discovering that as scientists so i think i agree with you I and mean, conan doyle um, has the fa famous fairy picture which you know I, I can't comment on they could be fake they could maybe they're not but yes i agree there are there must be other forms of elemental and and Emma was actually admitting to that, wasn't she? Um, who else? Yeah, Sharon. Um, I'm of the opinion that um, just because we can't see it doesn't mean to say that it's not there Absolutely. on all levels, whether it's human form, whether it's alien form or any sort of form whatsoever. The consciousness is not one dimensional, it's several dimensions on uh, several different layers. So, you know, I'm a firm believer that, you know, you know, we're so busy looking for the aliens that we don't realize we are the aliens in some respects. Yep, agreed. <laughs> <laughs> Right, isn't it? Right, we're running out of time, so I need I need to move on to the next question. <laughs> if spiritualism is true, why is there so much in disharmony in its ranks? And why and why are not the Sunday meetings better attended, especially in Manchester? She really didn't like being in Manchester. And why don't spiritualists give us something new? So firstly, honesty charity, justice, and goodness generally are acknowledged to be the elements of true religion. But are all mankind honest, charitable, just, and good? Why then expect from spiritualists that mighty and perfect agreement which no other grades of society on earth display? In some respects, and in all too many places, the public Sunday meetings do not deserve to be well, well attended. In too many instances, our meetings are not conducted in such a way as to inspire religious sentiment. We need teachers better educated and more highly cultured than the listeners, though the re reverse is too often the case. We need good and inspiring music, and above all, we do not need exhibitions of indifferent phenomena or attempts at phenomena pandering to the taste of mere curiosity hunters. We presume spiritualists give our particular question nothing new, for the same reason that the sun of our solar system shows him nothing new. The sun is the light of earth, and spiritualism is the light of the life beyond the earth. With the mind of religion and the eyes of science, he will find ever-growing wonders in the movement worthy of common. So look and it should be unlocked and open to you. Now, don't you think that's a really contemporary 21st century answer? Yeah. First of all, I think you know, it was very interesting that again, I've heard exactly that question posed quite recently. But I think it's a very, very good answer. So Sammy, what do you think? Sorry, I wasn't uh, unmu uh, unmuted. Um, no, I totally agree with that. Um, what she says is so as relevant today um, in everything and with the churches and the services and spiritualism, it's not about providing entertainment, it's about providing that evidence. Um, and that is the key thing. And that's what she's saying. I totally agree with what she says there. One of the other uh, questions I haven't included, she actually says, that she doesn't think we should give evidence in church services. We should give philosophy only, mm. and, and which is very interesting, I think. And she res reserves mediumistic evidence for circles. Mm. I think philosophy is, is um, 
also a key part of the service and it's something that I think people don't some people don't see as important but it is because it touches people's lives and it makes people think and it also um it relates to her seven principles as well that's what the philosophy should yeah. be but the important thing is it touches everybody in the congregation yeah. at once it's very very efficient it's a lovely, it's a lovely delivery. And if what we need much more, and again, I've heard this conversation, we need more inspired speakers in this in this movement. The 19th century and two world wars has hijacked spiritualism for mediumship, evidential mediumship. Yeah. Before before the First World War, it wasn't, and after the Second World War, it it was just hijacked completely. Yeah, I'm actually doing um, a philosophy group on the SNUI because I do find it very interesting. I do like, um, I want to be able to understand the philosophy so that I can relate it to seven principles when I, I am giving that within a service. So um, I do think that is a key, important part and Good. something that I want to learn more about. But keep keep an open mind. Remember what I've just, what we've just been talking about was, was, uh, nearly seven years before the SNU existed and before the seven principles were were fixed in concrete, I might say. If you read the opening chapter in this book, in our first publication, the first first publication of, of the Unseen Universe, she only has six principles. Mm. It changes and it moves on. The one she hasn't got was communion, communion of spirits and the ministry of angels. Wow. Interesting, interestingly, <laughs> but seven years later, there it was, embedded in our in our uh, limited company, for a very good reason. But but you know we have to keep open minds about this, and that's the wonder of finding a book like this. She changed she's changed me completely, because it, I've I've almost been mentored by a pioneer, and that's that's the wonder of, of publications that we have. A lot of people just say, oh, they're too old-fashioned, but they're not. Uh, there's they're not, a lot they, of interesting information in, in some of yeah. the old books that, you know, you can read and learn from. That's right. Uh, but you've got to do it with an open mind. You've got to uh, overlay that with 21st century thinking, mm. you know? And that's what I, I hopefully I've tried to do today in this, yeah, this yeah. sort of experimental talk or interaction, really. It's an interactive talk, isn't it? Mm. Um, so it is very, very interesting. Okay, um, so that was where we're at. Are there any other questions? Because I think now we've opened this all up. Henrietta, you want to have a word? Um, I want to comment on um, inspirational speaking and trans mediums, they can speak or let their guys speak. And that's not necessarily evidential mediumship but they can bring forth messages that are necessary for the entire congregation. Absolutely. I, 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 I believe um, inspirational speaking is one of the most important things that could be developed in the future, certainly online, but in our churches as well, alongside healing, which has been there from the very beginning and is so much more important now because of, of the, the pandemic, it's changed our view of healing and how things are done. You know, we've got all these vaccines which may not work because there are so many different variants around. We don't know. So spiritualist healing is going to be very, very important. And, and to know that we can do it over Zoom. You know, I do one-to-one -one on Zoom and it works. The energy is there. I sit in a circle, a healing circle, and it works, you know. So all of these things are going to be our future. And I'm not saying we shouldn't um, go back to the churches and do healing in churches, because I think that is also important. We have to have human contact because we're physical. You know, that's part of our, our maker. But, but online is now also going to be part of our maker. So I, I, want, I just want more people giving it information from spirit, because it's interesting. Once they do, once it kicks in. It's very interesting. And I don't like the some funny voices and all of that sort of stuff. All I want to hear is, is something that really makes me think, sit up and think. 
And there are, there are a few around who do that. Probably. Anyway, there you go, Fiona. When you find it fascinating that Zoom appeared before the pandemic, I know it was around a little while, but not a lot of people knew it. Yeah, absolutely. It suddenly it appears, and it's been the lifesaver for many people. I've got a friend who is has to shield, and she was getting quite... Um, not depressed, but very nervous, I should say, because she's used to being out. That was her thing. But she's terrified now of catching anything. Oh, and um, she's got on to Zoom and she does um, sofa singing or something it is. And there's no, there's no, you keep your volume off, you're on mute, but everybody's there. And she says there's 300 people. Yeah. singing to some song and she said she just belt it out and it's been an absolute lifesaver for her yeah it's great um, yeah it's synchronicity isn't it In interestingly yes. and, it, and we if you're a spiritual you get lots of that and it's interesting that judy seaman and others have pushed the um inspirational speaking and i know kathy has as well um, and the philosophy, how that was being pushed before we went into the first lockdown. Yeah. And now it's just all like a river. It's just all flowing in the right direction. Yeah. Penny Hayward's very good as well. If you yes. Oh, you yes. Know. Yeah. Um, so there you have how the, the world has moved on and spirit are certainly using Zoom and we are. And the world is, and it's it's really interesting to to see how that happened. As you say, it's it's moved everybody on. Isn't that great? Because spirit was a very stick in the mud. You know, they weren't, didn't want to change anything, and now they've had to change. And and I think that's hinted at in what Emma's answer said that we have to move on and we have to make it work for the time. And twenty first century, we've got to make it work for our our time. And it, it's starting to happen. Okay, I'm, I'm going to stop sharing now and hand back to the Danny Arcus. We're just about on nine o'clock, I think, aren't we? It was an amazing team. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad people actually got, you know, asked questions and joined in because that's the object of the exercise. But isn't it interesting how contemporary that was? You know? Yes, but I was wondering have, <laughs> did we progress? Or not? <laughs> I, I'm not sure we are, we're asking the same questions, but I think we're getting different answers now. Yeah, probably. But it's uh, absolutely interesting. Uh, it's so, 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 so actual, so, so true, so modern. Yes. We are not so modern. <laughs> the, the book is far from modern. It's, it's all stuck together. But it's uh, easy to find that book. I don't, I don't know. I can't. I'm, I haven't been able to find it. it. Just it found me. It's like a stray cat. It found me, um, and I'm really so grateful that it did. No oh, wonder. And I'm grateful to the friend who who gave it to me. Wonderful. Still. So. so thank you all for joining in. I and hope you enjoyed it. We have enjoyed a lot, and I'm sure the, I'm speaking on behalf of everyone. And there is a, a surprise for all of you, uh, because in uh, the, now I don't remember the exact date, but very soon uh, Tim will be here again to speak about uh, past life and reincarnation. So check on the Facebook page, SNUI Facebook page, and on the SNUI newsletter, and it will be advertised in time. I think it's March sometime, but I can't uh, remember. Yes, but I don't remember exactly the name. No, me. March is a long way away. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you very much, Tim, for your uh, for joining us, and thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, on SNUI, there are a lot of interesting session, lesson, talk, circle, everything you would like to attend. 
you can. And uh, this recording will be up, uh, up, uh, uploaded on uh, YouTube as a new film channel. Bye bye, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Bye. Have a good evening. Goodbye.